sure. Two hours? Unbelievable. Yeah, I don't have any snacks. What's that? Hey, welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting of April 18th, 2019. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good. Citizen statements and petitions. Correspondence to the board. Consider Economic Development Committee's request for support to repeal tax on farm animals and equipment. Come on up. Good packets for you guys. More packets. Thank you, Tom. That's one. Thank you. Thank you. So, go right ahead. All right. So, thanks for having me here tonight. Um, so, the Economic Development Committee looking to improve the business climate in Menden, um, found that there's a, a tax we have here in Menden that many of the other communi surrounding communities have actually done away with in the past few years, and that's the tax on farm animals and equipment. Um, a few years ago, I know the Agricultural Committee brought forward the idea of, of repealing it. It didn't quite make it to the ballot or town meeting. Um, I, I was hoping that we could talk about this again now. It's, it, frankly, it's a tax that doesn't bring much money into Menden. Uh, an average over the past, I, I've stapled some town reports. If you looked at the past six years, the average that actually has been committed uh, and levied in that tax has been $1,500. So it's not a lot of money for the town, but for the, the farmers in Menden, it can be quite substantial, a couple hundred bucks a year, a hundred bucks a year. If you're, you're a farmer, that can be a, a decent amount of money. Um, and that mixed with the fact that we are a right to farm town, we have uh, a commitment to farming as part of our open space plan. I think it sends a contradictory message. Um, and I hope you'll consider bringing it to the people in the Menden uh, for a vote repeal it. I've also talked to the Board of Assessors who are also, uh, two out of the three of them actually signed a letter in support of getting rid of this tax. One, Ken O'Brien actually didn't sign because he's been affected by it, so he didn't feel comfortable signing it, but I think the general consensus is it's something that Menden really isn't getting much from and uh, something that, that the town should look at getting rid of. So we can vote on this tonight, but it has to go to a ballot. Next it does year. have to go to a ballot next year. So this would be a vote. It needs to be a two-thirds vote to put on the next ballot, whenever that is. Maybe a special election might come up. But I'm thinking it's probably going to be next year's ballot. You know what's funny is, is that uh, obviously this is the first time something like this is coming in front of the board. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, as I was looking at it at first, I was like, what constitutes how a farm animal is even taxed? You know, it, uh, yeah. it, uh, any insight on that? I mean, yeah, so it's, a, it's $5 per thousand of value um, is how they assess it. Okay, so if you have a horse and they assess a horse, it, it's not horses, it, it's swine, chickens, cows. Horses are not included. The horse is actual personal property taxes. Um, Jane? Jane Hall, what do you know about the food? I was going to say, I think you have to make it very clear because most horses are recreational. I don't know of anybody who has grass that are, so they should be cut out of this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, actually, though, they, they, they already are taxed separately. Okay. All right. So they're, they're taxed under personal property taxes, separate way, separate assessment. Okay. 
And, and, and what about the equipment? Is it, because uh, you list equipment here as well? Again, I know it's not a lot of money. I'm just kind of curious how the equipment's determined as well, because there's a lot of people that have land that they could call it a agricultural farm that might have a backhoe or something. Uh, you'd, you'd have to talk to um, the Board of Assessors. I know that there's a special, there are special things they take into consideration about whether or not something you know, might be used for, for growing an agricultural product or might be used in a different kind of business. Mm -hmm. The only reason why I ask this is there's a lot of people that still have a lot of land in town that all of a sudden want to put a garden on their property. They call it a farm, and the next thing you know, well, well, that's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm speculating. I don't know if that's right. Right. I, well, if it's under a certain value, uh, there's no tax anyway. The yeah. only farms that would actually be taxed are farms that, that might have a, a substantial amount of product. Um, and, that's a, and that's what I was just trying to get to. Is yeah. Do we do we know what that is? Yeah, I, I think I think it's if if the taxes the tax assessed is would be less than ten dollars, mm -hmm. then they they it's you're not assessed anyway. I mean, it's not a lot of money. I was just kind of curious. Yeah, absolutely. Tom, do you have um, do you know the number of properties that this affects? Um, it changes from year to year. Um, I don't know. <laughs> See, I'm trying to decide what I actually know, given my job versus Correct. what. Is publicly available. So the, the the amount changes from year to year. To year. Mm -hmm. I, I would say there's. Um, th Last year it involved ten farms. There we go. It's been from ten. ten it, it's been between the range of ten to to fifteen for the past seven years. I mean, again, and, and as a comment. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. And also considering that the the farm to table um, industry, if you call it, is growing, um, I, I think that Menden's traditionally been an agricultural community. I think that's why a lot of people move here. And the fact that we're the only town in the area that still has this tax, like I said, sends a contradictory message. So my only, I'm all in favor of this. I'm just process-wise because we're over a year away from the next. Yeah, ballot. I was hoping to get this in front of you sooner, mm -hmm. um, but a lot happened. And but uh, I, I think, I, I mean, this is something we could put on the ballot next year. Oh, absolutely. Um, because the vote really has to be the language of the ballot. You know, that's part of the, if there's a ballot question. Well, we could, we, we can, can symbolically it. We can vote to support yeah, well, it. Yeah, we well, I think I have the law stapled to, um, it's chapter 59, section 8A, and it's to seek voter approval to not impose the excise established by this section. So I, I would think that it would be the voters vote to not um, not impose the farm and animal excise tax as established by Mass General Law, Chapter 59, Section 8A. Yeah. I mean, we could, to, to Mark's point, I think we can symbolically do it right now, but it's going to go on a warrant and it's going to go on a ballot. Right. So we could vote for it then, or we could vote for I it I don't now. think it needs to go to uh, a town meeting warrant. That, from my conversation with the division yeah, I think of local you services, wrote that it, there was an, an, yeah, I just quickly saw because um, you asked for clarification from DOR. Yeah, and he said voter approval would be from a ba a ballot. It's just you guys who so. put things on the ballot. Okay. Well, as long as we don't forget about it when we. I mean, we could. Vote. I'll remind you. Don't worry. We could vote on the the language next meeting. You know, we can just have Cindy write the language Perfect. that we need to vote on. Or next March. Or next March. Yeah, yeah, yeah but there I, is I mean, yeah. yeah. We get to it. No, I know, yeah. but I mean, we have I mean, time to make yes. it right. Okay. <laughs> Whichever. Yeah. But I mean, I'm happy to support that. Yeah. As well as I am. 
right. Excellent. Okay. Um, now, I, I think I'm also on here to give an update about the sure. EDC. Do you want me Go right to ahead. do that as well? So, um, Economic Development Committee has been working on a few things, this being one of them, um, as well as we've been talking to other economic development committees in the area about a Blackstone Valley Restaurant Week, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the Blackstone Valley Chamber of Commerce and Pulse Magazine. Um, that's scheduled for the first two weeks in June. Uh, a few restaurants in Menden have been approached about being part of it. Our hope is to, uh, you know, there's a lot of great restaurants in this area. There's a lot of great restaurants in Menden. Uh, I think that people outside of the Blackstone Valley need to know this. So the hope is to drive people in to, to go to places like like uh, the Steakhouse or Alicante that, that might not even know they exist. Um, so the hope is really to, to get that out there. Uh, other things we're working on, we have an open for business breakfast on May 15th right here, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. It'd be awesome if, if you guys could be there. Um, there's gonna be some special guests from the state and um, all, all the business and businesses amended will be invited as well. We we try to do this What's annually. What's the date of that again? May what? Open for business breakfast. Yeah, what time? What date? May 15th. Oh, oh May 15th. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday morning. Um, and then a new project where we're going to be undertaking is seeking to make it easier to start a business in town. You know, talking to a lot of business owners, they find the process confusing. My goal is to create kind of a routing slip like we do for for demolitions or or um, renovations, that sort of thing. Kind of create a routing slip type thing so that, that business owners can, it, it, the, the process is just more streamlined. So that's something we're looking into as well, among other things. Sure. Have you, um, <clears throat> on the EDC, have you guys started considering, um, um, have you been looking at the land on Route 16? Absolutely, and yeah. Trying to, uh, what, I'd, what I'd like to see is some, some sort of report of, um, of suggestions on what we can put, that, put on that land as well as our obstacles um, right. that we, we, what we've been up against. Yeah, well, we have, we have discussed that. One big obstacle is that there's frontage that is um, conservation, uh, land with a conservation restriction on it. So we've talked about how we might be able to, to move that or, or whether we can just work with that being there. Um, in addition, I know that there's talk about getting that land appraised. Uh, so we were waiting to see what the results of the appraisal where I've, I've actually gone to a few CMRPC meetings where they, they have some software that uh, they can use to advertise land like that, mm -hmm. that I expressed interest in, because I think it would be perfect for our purposes, so. Okay, and you're looking at water infrastructure and so on. Absolutely, absolutely. yep, yep. Uh, the water infrastructure ends right at the top of the hill. Um, you know, there's talk to try to extend that down, mm -hmm. see what that would mean for our contract with Hopedale. Mm -hmm. We are definitely looking into that. Okay. So I'd be, I'd be interested in that piece of it, you know, to really focus mm -hmm. from an economic development perspective on what we can do with that land, some, some creative ideas, but really what you guys identify as some of the obstacles of getting business there. Right. Um, because it's been sitting there for a long time. It's, we've kicked that can around a little bit, but we never really formalized anything. So I'd really like to, I think we should start focusing on. Yeah, absolutely. And also there's a, there are a few uh, articles on the warrant in town meeting uh, that I think, two that the planning board put forward, two from my own citizens petitions that would look at uh, expanding development within Menden. Um, including those parcels, including the land surrounding those parcels. So I think that that's something that we have to look at as well. I have another one up here, Don. Good. Hi. So Tom, we have, um, this is just an aside, and I was think, talking to Mark a little bit about this before, but 
we have a public hearing in a little while um, on a potential zoning change mm -hmm. that's on Hartford Avenue East from commercial to residential. And I just was thinking it's probably valuable to have economic development know these potential chains and, and be considering the impact that they might have actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, considering it's right on 140 in that corner. And so I'm wondering if there's a way that maybe you can reach out to ZBA or the planning board to, f to make sure that you guys get notified of zoning changes like that. Absolutely. So that you can take a look at potential impacts and have a recommendation about how it affects, you yeah, know. Yeah, and I, I am in talk with the planning board constantly. And I know when that type of stuff happens, I mean, I, I think we're all going to be there on Monday for that public hearing right but um yeah definitely I, I think in general i think the all the committees in this town need to right to but i mean especially if we are changing zoning from business to residential or i mean yeah, or vice absolutely. versa that is definitely has an impact on potential economic development in our prime development areas and i just think that that absolutely. is at least something that needs to be looked at by the committee and then discussed whether you have identified prime areas that are best for development or you know that sort of thing in in, in, in conjunction with the master plan yeah absolutely okay cool anything else all right good thanks for having me thank you consider allowing the lions club to hold a toll road may 11th so I move to allow the Lions Club to hold a toll road on May 11th, 2019 from 8.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the corner of Route 16 and North Ave. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Consider allowing parking on Lot 3 North Ave and Lot 6 and 20 Milford Street and fee waivers for Lions Club Circus on July 15th. I move to allow the parking on Lot 3 North Avenue to, and Lots 6 and 20 Milford Street and waive associated fees for the Lions Club Circus on July 15, 2019. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Consider renewal and extending cable licenses. Attorney William Solomon. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Um, I'm your attorney, <laughs> not thank Verizon's, you. and thank you for that opportunity. Uh, I've been working with the uh, the town uh, very much with Laura and, and, and at the meetings with Kim, who's been great. And um, I just want to update you and then ask if you take a vote tonight. So um, let me just take you through where things are with Verizon. The license with Verizon is up on May 3rd. We've been negotiating for a while. Um, each company negotiates in a different style. Uh, Comcast is a cable company that likes being a cable company. Verizon's uh, providing cable service, but they don't really see themselves as a cable company, and their goal going forward is to, is to be totally wireless. So as a result, uh, the process is different with each company. Uh, with respect to Verizon, um, last time around, <clears throat> I worked uh, with Towns. I was the first attorney to work with Verizon Massachusetts to reach a license, and this time around, uh, they wanted some changes. And it took about a year and a half to reach a fundamental uh, uh, license format on the major issues that would be sort of generic to all communities uh, from my perspective and their perspective. Uh, and that was done in uh, 2017, uh, uh, late 2017. So um, I have, uh, with respect to the communities I work with, I've sort of been in an equilibrium with them. We've decided to keep that format. I believe it serves the towns well. It's a five-year license. It's what the longest they're doing anywhere in the country. Um, they first had seven-year licenses, five, six in Massachusetts, but then at the, the election of 2016, uh, after that they changed and 
because they're looking at a different future. They don't want to go too far out. In exchange for that, uh, the, there are requirements that, that I had for the communities I work with um, that would make that something that would work for the towns. Um, I, 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 we proceeded ahead in, in, uh, in Menden based on the, the idea, like, as with many of the licenses, including many completed at the end of 2018, we would have the same model. I think we will. But Verizon has new uh, top corporate leadership and a few other people at the top. And beginning January 1st, they are l taking a look at their, their approach to licensing. Not whether they license, but just making sure that it meets what they, their, 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 their needs going forward. As a result, licenses, uh, <coughs> Uh, at least the ones I've had, based on the, the, the model that I think works, have been in, in limbo. Uh, the representatives of Verizon, their council, who uh, represent them nationally, but are located in, out of Boston, uh, and I have been in communication. I've made clear that I think if there's a line that Verizon believes ex exists, where they want to take a new approach going forward, then there are, are four towns that I'm working with, one of which is mended, that's on the other side of the line. And uh, the license should be completed based on that. If there's non-material changes, we can talk about it. Uh, the Verizon Councils are very um, willing and accommodating and a, while representing their client to talk if there's some little changes to make changes that work. But I think here we should be proceeding ahead on the draft license that we provided to Verizon in February of this year. Um, and uh, I, based on those discussions, I believe that's going to happen. Uh, but it's taken longer than I expected, longer than they expected, as they wait for Verizon Corporate to say, yep, everything's fine. And again, the key point is that this license, I believe, should proceed based on what's been agreed to do, agreed upon to date. So with that, um, with the license running out, I'm here today to ask you to sign an uh, extension of that license. I selected a shorter date, uh, May 31st, because I want Verizon to move this along. If we need to extend it, obviously we can, but the goal would be to, to, try to, to try to get this done in that time period. I know you have one meeting. Whether that happens or not, we'll see, but I, I expect it to happen, if not then, in a very short distance uh, in time from that. So with that, if, if we have the time, if I can take less than five minutes, I'll just update you on what the license, I know you have it and you've had some chance to look at it, but it hasn't been presented to you. So let me just briefly go over what that license provides, well, if you have like. you gone through all of that? Well, we've met before and we talked mostly about discussing the terms that we wanted for <coughs> both um, for both providers. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then we also met to discuss what we would do with the capital funds. But I mean, the details of what it provides yeah, not I'm not asking you to do it anyway. In fact, we're here just today for the extension, and and you're a busy night, so I can certainly come back in another time. Yeah, I think yeah, we'll just that, leave that'd it be fine. The, I just thought I'd take if, but it's a it's a busy night. Yeah, it's, we got so, limited yep. time. Normally we could. Yeah, no, not, on, not a problem. But, so, okay. um, so, but, but all I will say is that it's an excellent license. That the operating support increases 25 percent from 4 percent to 5 percent. That the capital support is a uh, is a percentage and a dollar amount that averages about. Fifty to fifty-five thousand dollars, which is the same amount of the last license, peg capital, peg public education, government capital. It was about a little more than the amount last time, but this is five years. That was ten years. So it's a strong license. It protects the town and the important legal uh, aspects coming forward, uh, where there's competition, issues of bundling, and a bundle. How much is cable? So it's a good license. Um, I would have done it today if I had time. Uh, but I had, I had to go to Boston. Uh, I'll, I'm going to give you a summary of the key license parts. You can take a look at that. But bottom line, it's an excellent license, and, I, and I'm, I'm confident we're going to get there. We're just waiting for the, the I'm told, the very final corporate approval in Verizon, and, up, and uh, all the yeses, all the answers below that are let's go ahead, and I, I'm, I'm confident we'll be there. So with that, I would just ask that you would ex uh, do an extension of the license mm -hmm. till I think it's May 31st. Um, and vote and sign that, and I'll, I'll handle that, the, the processing of that, and Verizon uh, is, in, is in agreement that that will be signed by their representative. Great. So I move to approve the extension of Verizon New England cable license between the town of Menden and Verizon New England 
to May 31st, 2019. Second. Further discussion? I just wanted to add that um, we, st we don't have time to really get into the, the details tonight, but um, the capital piece that he's talking about, it really is a, it's a sum of money that can be dedicated towards the replacement of things related to the services. And so we had a meeting with the key stakeholders, World Band and Cable 8, um, where he came and we talked about what the needs would be and so that's it's not as if it's um, capital funding that we're going to use for anything it's specific to our IT and transmission needs and so they were involved in those conversations so you know that everybody has been included yeah very much like it's Gibbs said the uh, your IT gentleman outside guy who works for the town and we were looking at the, the, the any cable related needs including the municipal fiber aspects so and those will be within your decision making after the license is signed this license doesn't commit dollars for anything other than it needs to be used for cable or cable related purposes so thank you great thank you so much thank you thank you for coming on thanks. short notice thanks. no problem i'm happy to do it i'm glad i could thank you good luck with the meeting thank, thank you. you all right consider the request of zba to retain Jason Tellerman of Mead, Tellerman and Costa. Closing a lot of windows. <laughs> this happens every time you, know, you get near Easter and candy's coming. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Legal services. Do you want to talk about this? Um, the ZBA um, requires separate legal counsel for 40B projects, and the fees are paid by the applicant. Um, they had sent me an email. The um, council had asked for sort of a renewal. Um, a, agreement of the renewal and I had said contracts are signed by the board and so I've added it to the agenda for tonight for your so okay. did she, did they send us a contract or did he send us one thank you thanks Bill that I don't know Laura did um no it was this email that that's in the packet okay just oh. the email I wanted to use as the in quotes Eight is basically what right services so maybe you, just, you can just vote the per hour fee up to So is he a specialist on 40B projects? Is that why they've used him, or have they just used him in the past because they were just allowed to pick whoever they want? I don't know the answer to that. You can ask them at 7 if you'd like to wait. I assume he'll be here since it's a 40B project. Sounds like he's been doing it for a long time for us. I don't know what so long means, but sounds like it has been. Hmm. I just don't, I don't know. Need more information on the person. I think yeah, that's a I just have request. always thought that anytime I just like our council, town council, to like say, yeah, this is someone you should work with. That's fair. Not just this thing saying, you know. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sure that he was the um, council on um, Cobbler's Knoll. Probably. So we might want to find out how that went. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's the same person. You know? Well, it, we're getting this like as if this is the person they've always used for anything 40b and that's why i'm kind of really couldn't be that frequent no but the ones we've had you know so why don't we not vote 
follow up. We're going to meet again next Friday for, well, following Friday for annual town meeting. Yeah. You could vote on it then. That's my thought. I'm just wondering if he's already. Okay. No, I don't care. And we can ask for more information on. Yeah, I it's, mean. It's nice that he's the person who's asking for it, but yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Consider signing the annual town election warrant. I move to sign the annual town election warrant. Second. Further discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Let's do that. Marijuana host agreement. So we're not really, I mean, I don't have anything to talk about it tonight because we just received an updated version because we, at the last meeting we asked Cindy to provide us with a document that she, it just came tonight. Like oh. I haven't even looked at it. It was like five, five o'clock. So you were in traffic. <laughs> so okay. we had asked her to just send us um, language that she was comfortable with to, as a starting as a point. Starting point. Yep. And then from there, we would provide her with input on what we want to see. So I think at this point it's having Kim review it and us review it and probably send it to to the chief, uh, both fire and police. I would say. Yeah, I'd it's like probably. to see them included in the process or any other uh, stakeholder that mm -hmm. it reaches out to. So right. uh, who else that would be? I know the two chiefs, two chiefs from public safety. Um, definitely should see it. Um, I don't know if you think anybody else. Not really. Ask him. I think that's it. It's fine. Okay. So, Laura, do you mind sending that to Chief Kersey and sure. Chief Kessler? And that was it for there, unless you had anything else. Nothing to discuss it. Yeah. Um, right. Um, not reasonably anticipated uh, there was something that's slightly changed with the budget that you wanted to talk about correct I spoke to you both individually last night the FinCom um, voted and recommended the budget that you had um, put forward 19 million seven 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 five one five is the bottom line there was one change to the budget that didn't affect the bottom line the net number for the school, which we had been using, which was 502, is actually 488 because I had included debt service and I didn't have the actuals from the school because I was out. And so last night, luckily, both Jay was here and I was here, and so we were able to take those funds and allocate them into FinCom Reserve like we had discussed at the previous meeting. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line remains the same. You'll, the only change you'll see is that now there's money in FinCom Reserve like we had wanted back to a little bit higher than their original. So they're at 43,000 and change. The difference was 13, 13,000 in the $13,000 range that got put into FinCom Reserve. So it restored them to 40 plus about 3,300 more. So everyone right. was happy. Excellent. Wonderful. Do we need to do a motion to amend, uh, to accept the budget as amended? You can, sure. All right, so. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. We should make that official. Yes. Do you want to come up here? Or do you want to come up here? No. Okay. I can speak loudly enough. And it's short. Um, anyway, as someone who worked briefly on the local historic district and knowing the work that the present commission put on the local historic district, I'm just wondering when a local historic district commission is going to be appointed. It's way overdue. Way overdue. And I understand there have been some people who have volunteered for that position. Um, I think a gentleman who lives on North Avenue has volunteered. Being the, but you know, it's it's time at least to advertise for people. 
Have we not advertised it at I all? I have no idea. I just know that it's up to the select board to appoint. What was the group that the building committee said they needed, and then, or they said they needed a quorum, but there wasn't a quorum, but there actually was a quorum? Was, what, uh, was I, think it was, I would think it was a historic commission that Mrs. Lowell's talking about. They didn't have enough people on it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I think they have enough people on the commission. Uh, this is the local historic district commission that actually. The district um, commission. I thought it was the district the commission. That's what I thought was the issue. Yeah, I thought it was the district commission that was the issue. And then we found that it, there was a quorum. I, I, in all honesty, it's kind of catching me off guard. I, I can't remember. But if it's something that we should be doing, then let's just do it. <laughs> you know, if we have people that are willing to volunteer, I mean, then, you know, let's, I think we just, you know, post like we would normally post, you know, looking for volunteers, follow the process, and then, you know, if people are interested, normally they'll write a letter of interest. I haven't seen any letter of interest come across my desk. Uh, well, I think the commission desk. knows some people who. I think there are at least two people who volunteer, and I think they, the historic commission knows who they are. Okay. Well, I'm, I'll just outline the process, right? So the process is that they would send a letter of interest, and then we can. Yeah, I mean, if the commission knows who they are, then bring them on. <laughs> bring them on. Send them over here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I haven't seen anything come across, at least my desk on uh, on any of that. So. We're ready to go. Just need people to appoint. Step up. So. Yeah. Yeah. so, who would go through with the process then? Because this is also there's like ten thousand dollars that's sitting in an account that can't be used, and that commission has to figure out um, the process in which they would, you know, fund projects. And also, you've got the police station that you need that commission for. So. Right, and that's why I keep thinking. That was dis a discussion that was had about not having a quorum yet, but maybe there's not one at all. But there's also, when we formed it, I thought there were specific qualifications. Or there, you had to have a realtor. You had to have, is that ring a bell? suggested, yes. Oh, it's suggested, but not required. But there is, a, I think one gentleman is an architect, historic architect. Well, that would be helpful. <laughs> I pulled up the bylaw. Mm -hmm. And it says it needs to consist of seven members. Two members initially uh, initially appointed for one year, two for two, and two for three. I think there's a typo in this. Uh, and the commission shall include, if possible, one member uh, from two nom nominees from the Men and Historical Society, one member from two nominees solicited from the chapter of an American Institute of Architects, covering Menden or an architect living or working in Menden, one member of the Board of Realtors covering Menden or a realtor living or working in Menden, and one property owner from within each of the district. So we, do, we did appoint uh, a couple of people, Mark Bacchino, J.P. Parnas, and uh, he was on that. Ms. Muldoon Moore's back That's in 2017. So JP is the architect on North. Yeah, Ave. I think he is. Yeah. Yep. So he's already been appointed. So there's yeah, three appointed. There's three out of four that we need to at least have a quorum. So. I'll be from society. I'll send a letter. So we're close. Hmm. We're close. Just need one more, and if you want to send that letter. Okay, so we're close to getting that result. Something we could even do right before town meeting if we get a letter of recommend or a letter of uh, interest on May fourth, third. Right. Yeah, we had a process involved, but you know, honestly, I think this went through the process at one time. Well, the process is if there's a vacancy, right. we advertise for 30 days, mm -hmm. we take letters of interest, they come before the board to have interviews, they get, we get a recommendation from whichever advisory board they're going to be a part of, and then the board appoints. So it might be nice to let people know that the positions are open because there might be people. 
know about right. that would like to be on it, you know, even if it's an article in the crier or whatever. We usually do run an article like once a year in the, uh, or, or we ask Michelle to write an article about needing vacancies. And it's usually this time of year because it's always around. I just posted on the website as yeah. well. Yeah, I think we did it in, um, actually, I think we did it back to school time last year, so like last September, because I remember we, we, didn't think anyone be here, we didn't think anybody was going to be here in the summer, so we, I think we did it in September. Mm -hmm. So that's probably when all this was done last. But I'd say we just posted on the website again as well. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? No. no? Great. No. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.